Hello, it is I, Zeke, and as you can see, things look a little different. I finally found a shader that works, and for this episode, I have done quite a bit of work off camera. I still have the tent set up, but now I have this, this little portal room. I have this so that I can go to the starter town where a bunch of other players are nearby. So it's just something to, <laughs> it's just a way for me to stay close to everybody. I have a lot of sheep still. The mine is still here. Cows, some stuff, some trees that I'm growing out here to farm. I still haven't built this here because I thought I could probably do that on camera. I changed this building from last last time. The tower of the little building, I still haven't found out what it's called or why people build it, but it was in a picture on Google Images and I thought it looked cool, so I tried replicating it. Uh, this building right here is a little warehouse. <laughs> it's just a little warehouse where I have uh, supplies for this town so I can keep building things here. Uh, I've made advancements on the little roads here some other buildings that i have set up for now i guess i'll put up the images here uh this is the layout that i have for the for the town right now it's what i'm trying to follow and this is how i have it so far not exactly the same i already have the other two the other two islands mapped out as well so now i just have to follow the template and do the building and yeah i mean that's that's pretty much it that i have so far how's everyone's day going so far <laughs> i hope everyone's having a good day well i guess i should probably explain um what i'm doing here I am making the north and south paths for the shopping district inside of the Tortuga server. My design for the paths tied with another person on the server called Roslyn. Roslyn? One or the other, I'm not too sure what the correct pronunciation is. So that's what I'll be doing for the rest of this video is making this path. I hope that's alright with everybody who's watching. Besides making these videos, I've recently started making or working on a animatic. It's an animatic of uh, a story on Destiny 2. The story is narrated by My Name is Bife. Um, I, I think I he think has a very good voice for narr narration. And so because of that, I've, I've got inspired to plan out some stuff for the... For the story so i've been kind of doing that very little i've just been sketching out little thumbnails for the animatic so i can eventually go back and redraw the scenes in a more finished kind of way why don't we just go ahead and do a question from the question jar that's epic Okay, let's see what the question is. The question is, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? This one's rather easy. <laughs> um, I would probably, I would probably say I would choose super strength, or I would say maybe like indestructible skin, if that makes sense. I don't know what the correct power would be, but essentially, not being able to be like squashed or like destroyed by anything <laughs> i think i think that would be great because then you can just kind of fling yourself however you want with no repercussions something that i really enjoy about superheroes and stuff like that is is the things like one punch knockouts i guess it, it's it's very strange to explain but essentially a really good punch landing is really cool something satisfying about it just getting one solid punch in that works maybe you would assume things like one punch man i'm not a big fan of those kind because it's very anime-esque 
so it's a little too exaggerated for my taste, but like a, a normal human good punch. <laughs> I don't know, something so cool about it. So I would definitely do that. Uh, I would rather be very tough to be able to do those kind of one punches. <laughs> I'm going to do these quick fire questions. The next question was, what is something you are obsessed with? What am I obsessed with? I enjoy American Revolution era. <laughs> I think stuff like that is really interesting to me. The stuff with Hamilton I'm very interested in. So much so that I bought the book, the biography of Hamilton, as well as, uh, I believe, a book that had just a bunch of letters that Washington wrote. So I have a collection of that. Those are very interesting. I just really enjoy it. And then, <laughs> uh, funny enough, I, I would say I'm also, in, I would say interested in, not obsessed necessarily, but I'm very interested in Japanese culture. Not in a... <laughs> Not in a very, um, not in a way where I denounce my own culture <laughs> or my nationality, but I just have an appreciation of the Japanese culture. It is something that I don't really know a lot about. It's all very surface level. So I, I really don't know what there is to know because there's so many things you could so many things you could only know by living in that country. But I respect it. I respect the Japanese culture and the things that they make. And that goes along to the media that they do. So uh, manga, I'm very interested in. I, I like the style of it. Not all. I mean, obviously not every single manga style. But there's something about the the line work and the composition that I really enjoy. But I'm sure you could probably hear me ramble on about manga and anime in the previous episodes. Third question. If you opened a business, what kind of business would it be? I don't know if I would want to do a, a business per se. <laughs> uh, I, I think I think making a, some sort of um, club or or charity. I'm not too sure which one's the correct labeling for it. However, this is a thought that I've had for a while now. I'm going into teaching and specifically I'm going to teach middle school. And that is because I feel like middle school is the prime age for students in the sense that that is when they start to develop their personalities. And generally speaking, the things that that they experience in middle school essentially shape how they will be as adults. And I think I would be able to provide new experiences, new activities that they would they usually wouldn't be able to do in a in a way that is healthy for a child to learn them in the sense that I would introduce children to uh, different sports, hobbies, activities of that kind uh, in a more patient way that would help the students. So instead of having a, a business where where I would just profit off of things, ideally, in, in my perfect world, I would be able to have some sort of, I guess, activity center or club. I'm not too sure. There was something similar to that where I was growing up. But a place where I would be able to have staff, not a whole lot of staff, just a couple of people that I would be able to monitor pretty well something that's manageable for me to kind of check personally like a like a sort of schedule of things monday through friday where you know students would be able to try these things essentially i would have things that necessarily wouldn't be focused on in schools so i would probably have music classes art classes theater classes sports well, i would probably introduce some sports because I think that's already done extensively in school and games in there just so that the students aren't constantly having their brains <laughs> uh, tensed or in stress. <laughs> Something to kind of, you know, ease their minds. People need to do physical activities in order to clear their minds and be more productive. I mean, I would have 
staff that that specialize in these other sort of things like theater and uh and music that's something i i know nothing about but i would enjoy to have that so that students can pursue interests that they enjoy i would most likely also have them fill out kind of like a weekly thing i wouldn't know how often the the students um coming and going would would change i wouldn't expect them all to be returning members so i would have a weekly kind of sheet a weekly little assessment i guess seeing how the staff is doing and if there are any other sort of things that they would like to that they would like to be introduced to and would probably change it depending on on the feedback on that that's what i personally would like because i worry that students children <laughs> aren't being given the most opportunities that they can to find something that they really enjoy i feel as though a lot of people are left to kind of find their own way in the world and um are are forced to kind of get a job just to live but have nothing to kind of live for they have nothing that they truly enjoy so i think it's important for children to be kind of shown all of these other things that they would wouldn't necessarily know existed or that they would be good at so that would be my dream <laughs> my dream job all right next next question next question let's keep it going what do you do to get rid of stress as far as stress goes i think i i, I tend to watch just videos on youtube <laughs> there are there are a couple of different people that i watch that could you know kind of get my mind off of things so so usually i'll just watch videos or there are podcasts and like true crime series on youtube that i also watch sometimes when i play minecraft so i can basically mindlessly dig so i do something something that doesn't require me to use my brain <laughs> so i can just kind of mindlessly do that and listen to the other podcasts and whatnot that's what i tend to do when i'm stressed get my mind off of whatever is going on so that my subconscious mind can think about what's happening <laughs> and let my you know let my mind kind of wander all right last and special question of this episode and then the last question is is there a feeling you miss yes <laughs> um i've seen some posts about this a, a, a long while back but i i agreed with them it essentially was how people missed the feeling of going back to school for the first day and waking up very early for field trips or any sort of vacation trips with the family it's very difficult to explain i don't know enough about much <laughs> much of anything to really describe the feeling there was just a lot of excitement in preparing for your first day of school especially when you're younger i feel like i probably lost that feeling around middle school or high school it was just something so nostalgic there's a <laughs> i guess there's kind of like a, a certain feeling in my nose that i can kind of <laughs> correlate with it it's hard to describe almost like when you get water up your nose or when you hit your nose it's a weird tingling feeling i don't know why but that's just kind of the feeling that i remember of when the first day of school would happen like the night before and i also remember sometimes laying out exactly what i'll be wearing for the next day because of how excited i am to or how excited i was to go to school for the first day of the year as well as waking up for a field trip that was so fun and, and for when you would go on a vacation with the family i don't know what time people normally wake up for <laughs> for vacations for a for a road trip but with my family we would wake up well to me it was very early 
<laughs> I would probably assume they they would wake up around six. We would wake up at six a.m. and me being so young, I, it was very hazy. I would wake up mindlessly, get dressed and get ready, but there was just something about moving around in the dark because <laughs> we would leave at night. And there's just something so nice about that feeling because I, I I wasn't driving. I wasn't going to be the adult in the vacation, you know. I was just the kid being brought along. And it was nice. It was a nice feeling going on the road at night, seeing the sun rise, and, you know, falling asleep in the back, back seat of the car. There's just something so nice about that feeling. And unfortunately, it's just not something I can ever redo or feel again. I I don't I don't usually get excited for the first days of college. It's just not the same. Uh, vacations don't happen as often or as extravagantly as when I was a child. So there's no very early drivings to go anywhere. Maybe it'll change. <laughs> when I'm older and have my own children, maybe it'll be different. Maybe I'll feel what my parents probably felt when I was younger. But it's just kind of sad, and I miss the feeling of being a kid again, I guess. <laughs> kind of a kind of a sad way to end this episode, but I hope you all think about the questions that I answered and think about your own answers. In your own memories. I hope it's something that is happy, even if it's in a sad way. I hope you look back at things with fondness. See you later. Take care of yourself. Until next time. <laughs>